Starship Troopers Extermination is a co-op PvE video game which went into its early access phase last week on the 17th of the month. It was nice to see the many content creators who, like myself, decided to make videos on this game and show how fun it is. But then again, I had this one idea that I found out to be useful, so let's get right into the video. Hello everyone, this is Dragon Actual, and welcome to my first Starship Troopers Extermination Commentary video. So here's what I am going to tell you. Have you considered not recording an entire match? It sounds unorthodox, but here are my arguments. While it's true you can always purchase another drive in order to store more files, I did realize documenting an entire match did take up space and I would think what would happen if I chose to go down the route of doing that but leaving a ton of matches just sitting around in my computer. To put a similar case, back when I had my previous computer which featured a 2 terabyte hard drive, I was able to store a lot of Titanfall 2 matches, but then again, I ended up with too many of those recordings and around 25% of them, I never got around to uploading them at all. If you are confused about what I am implying by that card, take a look at how Starship Troopers extermination matches go. Assuming you started off at the very beginning of the match, you have the broadcast message that welcomes you to the map, then you have the squadron and class selection screens. From there, you and everyone else in the lobby exits the dropship. Suddenly, you are tasked with capturing territory and securing refineries around the map. Then everyone has to do their part in bringing the resources to the base. And as the match goes by, there are enemy patrols you may choose to deal with. Everything I just mentioned above are what the game expects you to do in just about every match. Hence why I chose to state this argument as it's nothing new. But some of the things I mentioned would depend on the game mode. And it's only early access, but to get back on point regarding how matches go, then there's the base defense where everyone is more or less contributing to building the base. This is something I wouldn't record either because you are just preparing after all. But then you might ask, when should we start to record the match? Personally, I would record when the horde of bugs arrive and you are prompted by the announcer to defend your base. This is where the fun really begins because as you are recording everything, depending on how things go, you may or may not capture everything. I, for most matches, I was able to witness the following how my teammates contributed to defending the base, communication and coordination in voice chat, how my teammates and I dealt with certain areas of the base being compromised. Afterwards, there's the evac phase of the match. This is another great moment you will enjoy recording because it really does get chaotic. During such phase, it's expected some of you will not make it and during the run, you are expected to encounter bugs just about everywhere you go. Thus brings up the possibility of being overrun at any time. If you would like to see some recordings of my experience with the evac phase of the game, here's the link on screen right now. Yes, I am aware of those words being harsh, but then again, this is something I actually noticed. There was one match, I recalled, it went on forever. It was the game mode in which you had to do your part in collecting resources, and the refineries were stationed at a really far away distance. And yes, this was on the veteran difficulty. While I did make attempts at trying to contribute and help out everyone, Ultimately, the lobby I was in was beyond saving, so I quit that match. 
So, those are my arguments. I am not saying I had a bad experience playing this game. I, for the most part, I had a lot of fun. And it was nice to get back into voice chat again in terms of video games because I will be honest, when it comes to games, I found myself not using voice chat not as often as I used to, but that's only due to the fact I've mostly played games that are inspired by COD and such games often can be enjoyed on your own with little to no communication and coordination. But then again, I am not trying to demonize any games I mentioned in this video. I do acknowledge this game is still in early access and I do encounter a lot of new players. It was nice to see people actually helping out and being civil for just about every match I've had. And uh, I'll be honest, I doubt anyone would really get set off over a PvE video game. For the points that I brought up in the video earlier, as usual, you are free to disagree. For the devs, I am very excited to see what future ideas lie ahead on this game's roadmap. I know the difficulty Heroes of the Federation is still not available as of this video, but once it's ready, I'm ready. And it's nice to see you are responding to player feedback, not just on Twitter, but on Discord and the Steam forums. And I'll be honest, I never realized the Steam forums were a place some developers had a presence in. It's just my personal experience with the fact I do not pay attention to the Steam forums, and if this is relevant, the games I play are mostly your typical first person shooter games. But anyways, to anyone watching this video, I hope to see all of you in game as well. Are you ready to join me in eliminating the bugs on Volaka? So let's march ever onward to tomorrow and forward onto dawn. My name is Dragon Actual, and thanks for watching. See you next time.